Max, it's been a while, but... Oh, baby, you ready? Hit that air raid siren. Time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, where we overreact to the football weekend. And look, it's week one. Plenty to overreact to, right? Plenty to overreact to. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, recalibration. Uh, so we spend, a, obviously we spent a lot of the off season and a lot of, a lot of just thinking about football mm-hmm. and projecting forward and we analyze and we overanalyze and we over, over, overanalyze and things like that. And then we finally get data points. And for some of them, for some teams, the data points fit right in line with what we were thinking, right? Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we thought Newton was going to be fine. Guess what? Newton's going to be fine. Okay? Uh, examples <laughs> like that. Uh, examples like, um, ba, 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 who am I thinking? We thought Highland Park was going to be yeah. pretty good. Yeah. They survive a, a game against Rockwell in 6A. Or 6A team. Um, but then we also had, I think, a fair amount of data points that shook our system. For example, we had four state champions lose in week one. Four. Now, I don't know if I would characterize any of them necessarily as upsets. Katie beat North Shore. Uh, I think we all viewed that as a 51-49 type game. I think North Shore was the favorite, but even but especially without Shadrick Banks, mm-hmm. I think that you saw that they are not the same team when they don't have that explosive passing element. Right. Uh, we also had Alito go down to Denton Geyer. Uh, Alito snaps the third longest regular season winning streak. Um, they lose to Denton Geyer. But again, that's a 6A over 5A. And as a result, we've had some people ask, how can Alito still be number one in our rankings in 5A Division II? Um, because I think that in a lot of ways, they were so far ahead of everyone else. They were kind of leaps and bounds, I think, the best team, the team to beat in 5A Division II. I think the gap has narrowed between them and the field. But I'm not ready to say they're not the best team in 5A Division II. Yeah, and I think if you look at it, there's just not a win on that list by the other teams chasing them that's more impressive than a three point loss to a top ten six A team. That's exactly right. I mean, and and we and to me, this is that that speaks really well for what we've got for uh, for Denton Geyer, a team we had a lot of questions about when we rank them, but obviously you go and you beat Alito, that's impressive. We also had, as we mentioned, Mason lose to Wall, snap their thirty eight game home winning streak at the Puncher Dome. They haven't lost since two thousand and ten. The quarterback, Matthew Kerr, was eight years old the last time that they that they lost at home. <laughs> but Wall put it on them, and guys, we're going to get to them in a moment. Wall? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and then in six man, Borden County beat Strawn. That is not an upset. Borden County is a Division One team over a Division Two team. Uh, Borden County is a ranked uh, D1 team, and actually Strawn lost that game last year, so that's not really an upset. But we had all these recalibrations. Yeah. And so... Keep in mind, when you're looking at our rankings, which are distributed by the Associated Press and on TexasFootball.com right now, remember that we're still gathering data, and we're trying to figure things out. I think we don't want to be too overreactive in our rankings, um, but we certainly had a little bit of recalibration in week one. That's thought number one. Thought number two, resurgence, question mark? (laughs) Uh, What I mean by that is in college ranks. I think overall, and I want to get your take on this, Mm -hmm. I think overall is a pretty good week in the college ranks for Texas teams. Yeah. On the whole, I would say there's a lot of encouraging things that we saw from a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. There are teams that I think underachieved. I think that I think Houston didn't look great in their in their loss to Oklahoma. They kept it close ish, but they're fine. uh, (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it was kind of weird. Anyone? I mean, Texas State. You know, I thought actually thought the defense played okay. Defense was fine. Defense was fine. Yeah, but they were playing a And M. They were overmatched. But Pretty much everyone else. I think TCU's offense is a little bit cause for concern, but not crazy. But let's run off the teams that we were impressed by. Mm-hmm. Were you impressed by Texas Tech? Absolutely impressed by Texas Very Tech. Very impressed <laughs> by Texas Tech in the Matt Wells debut. Yep. Were you impressed by Baylor? Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, right. Baylor took care of business. Were you impressed by Rice? I was r- really impressed by Rice. I did not expect that game to be that close. Right. I don't know whether to take that as Rice being good or Army probably not being as good as we probably thought. You shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it could but be both. I'm going to say that Rice is actually a secret Cusa contender because Army's always great. Yes, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> um, Monk I sports troops. I sports yeah, troops. Right. right. Um, <laughs> uh, were you impressed by North Texas? Yeah, for the no. most part. I mean, they they took their foot off the gas. Right. But pretty impressed they by played, them. They, were up, they played like they were up by 50 when they were only up by, like, what, three scores? <laughs> were you impressed by UTSA? I was probably the most impressed by UTSA. Yeah. Frank Harris is the truth. Uh-huh. And 
I kind of feel stupid forever thinking that they would ever lose that game to UIW. A and M, Texas. I think both took care of business. Yep. I, I, you know, I think that they they performed as well as they should in a week one warm up ish. Mm-hmm. Go now going into mega matchups yep. for the Saturday. Overall, and you think about it, it's been a while since we've had a really good year of college football in the state of Texas. Like mm-hmm. overall, a really good year. Maybe in week good. one, maybe things are turning in the right way. And number three, relaxation. I didn't do any of that this weekend. It's a long week. But if you are... You didn't even f- grill? Come on. I you, did grill. Yeah, see? You got to look grilling <laughs> in. Yeah. If you are a football fan, it's been one week, guys. Everything's okay. <laughs> there is a lot of noise in week one. A lot of noise. The, 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 the challenge is to separate the signal from the noise. If your team went out there and looked really, really bad in week one, figure out what it is that's wrong, but also know that these games don't count. They're basically non-district. They're almost, and yeah, I think all of them are non-district. I don't think anybody opens with district. And there's plenty of time to fix it. You don't have to be a finished product right now. That goes for high school and college, by the way. Don't have to be a finished product. So, chill. It's okay. We might, we might, be, worri- we might be saying we're worried about you right now, but there's no need to panic. Don't hit the panic button in this Monday morning fallout where we overreact to everything from the football weekend. <laughs> Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker for Ennis defensive end Jarvian Williams. 16 tackles, six tackles for loss, and two sacks in Ennis's. Did you guys see this? Yes. Ennis's win over Walks and Hatchie, the battle mm-hmm. of 287. Not bad. It's a really nice win for Sam Harrell and company. Yeah. Good win for the Lions, and Jarvion Williams, a big reason why. A helmet sticker for Texas Tech quarterback Alan Bowman. I watched a fair amount of this game mm-hmm. um, because it's on Fox Sports Southwest, and I support my employer. <laughs> uh, but I, I I watched a fair amount of this game, and let me tell you guys, if you it, it's okay, really and truly, it is okay if you forgot about Alan Bowman because he's been hurt because mm-hmm. he had a collapsed lung, right? It's okay if you forgot about him, but it is time to remember him because this dude is legit. 40 for 53, 436 yards and two touchdowns. And that doesn't tell the story. To me, he was razor, razor, razor sharp. Did everything you want to ask from him. I know it's against Montana State. I know it's against Montana State. But if you were having questions about the Texas Tech offense under Matt Wells, I don't think you have to worry. They looked really good, and Alan Bowman was a big reason why. And a helmet sticker to SNS Consolidated kicker Susie Griffin. I tweeted about this. Our, our outstanding photographer, Kelly Guest Basting, was out at SNS Consolidated and Paradise. And Susie Griffin kicked for SNS Consolidated. She was the kicker for the Rams. At halftime, she played the saxophone and, and she performed with the cheerleaders. That is versatility. <laughs> that is impressive. And so we've got. I tweeted photos of of, of all three of those. Mm-hmm. Kelly g- got great photos of all three of the, her kicking, her cheering, and her uh, playing saxophone. Super awesome. We've seen that. I've never seen people do more than two things. Right. right? It's always taking off the pads, performing in the band. Yes, exactly. And that's it. Right. Something. But that is super impressive. Susie Griffin uh, of SNS Consolidated gets a helmet sticker from me. Three teams to watch. Wall. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not just going on the road and doing something that nobody's done since 2010 and beating Mason at the Puncher Dome. This is a team that is big. They have a quarterback in Mason Fuchs, which is a huge bear trap last week. <laughs> <laughs> Fuchs. Um, they have, but between him, he is an operator. Oh my gosh. That guy is in complete command of that offense. And, you know, coming into the year, we were having, we had questions about Brock, Mm -hmm. right? We had questions, but we said, you know what? Benefit of the doubt, even though they're reloading, they got to be the favorite in Region 1, in 3 Division 1. Still? (laughs) Still? (laughs) Because it was 10-0 Brownwood is who won that game with Brock. Meanwhile, Wall goes on the road, and I know Brock lost to a 4A, and... Um, and Wall beat a 2A. But they also pummeled that 4A last year. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I am will. If you want to, I'll, I'll put it this way. I'll spoil something for the computer rankings that go up after the after the, the show today on TexasFootball.com. Wall's number one. 
Okay? Yeah. They were super... The computer is super impressive with what Walt did, so keep an eye on them. Uh, Rice. Mm. I know they're own one but that was about as good as you could hope for going up to West Point and uh, only losing 14-7, to and that game is 7-7 to in the fourth quarter. Oh, they were so close. They were so close. They were so close. Oh, my only my only thought is they had an entire offseason the game playing for the triple option, mm-hmm. right? That's the one thing is that they had sure. like unlimited time to prepare for the triple option. They were right. really good at it. Mm-hmm. I want to see. Who do they play this week? Um, I do not know. I want to see what they do uh, this week. Uh, let me see. Who does food play? Rice plays uh, Wake. Wake Forest, yeah. At home, okay. so. At home. Challenge them. Sure. You challenge them. Different t- style of offense. You challenge them. I'm willing to hop on board. Look, they're probably starting 0 5, right? Army, Wake, Texas, Baylor, Louisiana Tech. But we've talked about how Conference USA is there for the taking. And I think that they are, I think they are, they're ready. I think they have made strides. And it's not just because we love Mike Bloomgren. I think they've made strides. That was very encouraging to me. Another team to watch, or, or another team to watch is Arlington Martin. Ooh, ooh, boy. Ooh. Um, if you were ooh. looking for the biggest shock of the weekend, oh yeah, I think it's I think it's Arlington Martin over Lake Travis, oh. and it's not that it happened; it's how it oh, happened. Yeah. Arlington Martin dropped the hammer on LT. Yeah, thirty-five fourteen. Look, Arlington, on the road, Ar- on the road. Arlington Martin has had great teams in the past. Miles Garrett can attest to that. Mm-hmm. They have had great teams in the past. They've got a great coach in Bob Wager. We were not anticipating this. And Arlington Martin is certainly a team to keep an eye on. And suddenly, Thursday night against Hebron Ooh. gets real saucy. Yeah. Real saucy. There's three teams to watch. Three teams to worry about. Do we want to worry about San Angelo Central? <laughs> oh, that was not great, guys. Yeah. Um, San Angelo Central uh, plays, uh, they, they host, if I remember correctly, uh, Colleen Shoemaker. And uh, it did not go well. <laughs> or no, not, not yeah, um, yeah. It did not go well. Yeah. 54 to 21 was the final. Uh, yeah. That is, ooh, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. The defense is more concerning to me than the offense. Mm-hmm. The defense, giving up 54 points is, bleh, that's not good. Uh, they are actually, we'll have a piece coming up with our computer rankings. They are one of the biggest fallers in our computer rankings. Um, remember, this is the team that started the year number 50 in, six, in, in 6A. Uh, they are not in the top 50 anymore. No. That way. No. Um, UTEP. Um, Houston <laughs> Baptist is a, an FCS team, and they're not a great one. I think they went 1-10 one one last year. Uh, and basically, UTEP had to scratch and claw to get the win. Now, I know that in El Paso, wins are wins are wins are wins are wins. Mm-hmm. You just take them, however you can get them. But... That is not super encouraging. I hope that they sort things out, and I hope they get things kind of moving in the right direction. Because I, I had, I have, and maintain hopes for a UTEP resurgence this year. Sure, that was not encouraging week one. Uh, and then Brock, we mentioned it. Uh, it's not that they lost to Brownwood, because look, I think we were talking about this, Max. That yeah. that Brownwood's got tradition, and they got a great coach in Sammy yeah. Burnett. Yep. Uh, we love Sammy Burnett, but Sammy Burnett would admit that he's an offensive guy, not a defensive guy. Yeah. And so to lose ten nothing is concerning. And in three division one, if they're not going to take the reins of, of region one, then it looks like there are plenty of contenders like Wall who can up and grab it. And then three to see three games to watch this week: um, uh, Katie and Umbla Tascasita. Another spoiler alert: this is a matchup of the number one and number two teams in six A hey, in our computer ooh. rankings. Uh, Tascasita looked great in their win over uh, over Katie Taylor, and then Katie, of course, coming off a win over Galena Park North Shore. And another thing that's worth mentioning. Remember this game last year? Mm-hmm. Atascocita ran out to a big lead, and we were we were sitting here looking around, going, "Oh my God, is Katie going to be owned too?" Right. Uh, Katie ended up coming back. Atascocita wants their pound of flesh. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a very interesting game. Uh, Katie and Atascocita. Uh, Adam and Clemson. Uh, we have a team in the state of Texas that is going to play the defending national champs. A uh, and M is chirping. Have you seen all these all these quotes from yesterday? Actually, no, I have not. Oh, uh, they yeah. they had at least two guys guarantee a I actually, victory. I actually think it's kind of a genius strategy since sure, because since not? because of the hurricane, the game's never going to happen anyway. Ooh, you know what? I never thought of that. Yeah, it's like I, you have to wonder if like uh, the meteorologists at A and M, of which they have many talented yes. ones, don't they, they have be, a very good meteorology school? Not as good as Oklahoma, but we don't talk about that state. But anyway, <laughs> that's weather nerd. That's weather nerd me. This is the Mike Trout in me coming out. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I half wonder if someone over there is like, this game's never going to happen, so why don't you guys just 
talk about how much Clemson sucks. <laughs> um, they have been talking their mess. Yeah. And look, it was a good result against Texas State. I would not say a great result. All right. I thought they looked good. They're going to have to be Probably great. show much. They're Don't Clemson. need yeah, to. I'm sure. Clemson's you know. going to be like, oh, we can play over here in Tennessee. And it's like, no, no, no. We no, can't no, play. No, oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> we really actually, wanted we to go to Death Valley. <laughs> we actually built a dome. Oh, no, no. We did not agree to this. Uh, no, I think it'll be an interesting game. Uh, that's a, that's the Saturday afternoon extravaganza. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. A&M is calling their shot. I'd love to see it. That'd yep. be a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, and finally, uh, awesome neutral site game. Wheeler yeah. and Hamlin are playing in Childress. I believe this is a game that both teams, um, both teams had opponents that either went JV or dropping a six man, or they they don't have an opponent, and so mm-hmm. they're kind of both left on the dance floor. And they're like, "You you want to go?" <laughs> and so they're playing at Fair Park Stadium in Childress. Uh, I don't know where Childress is playing this week, uh, but if you are in Childress and you're not you're not going to that game, uh, this is an outstanding game. So Wheeler and Hamlin, and that is Monday morning fallout.